Hey, hello, how's it going? Hope you're fantastic. Look, if you're new around the channel, Frank is this old thrift store kendama that I got for like four bucks, and I started using him for all these kendama experiments I had. And today we are going to do three things to him. One, we are gonna try to stain our kendama wood. Two, we're gonna make our own sticky paint. And three, we're gonna see if we can find a use for all those random stickers that come with every kendama. Those first two kind of overlap in the story here, so stick with me. But first, the paint. Now, I've heard all kinds of things. People try like flex seal and spray on glue and stuff. But one weird one I heard was hairspray from some random YouTube video. And we're gonna try that first. Why? It's the least talked about and I would love to formulate my own clear coat secret recipe. But this seems like something simple that everybody could try. So let's just see what happens. Also, sometimes that's more fun. Just seeing what's gonna happen versus something that you already know is gonna work out. Cause what's the fun in that? So yeah, you can see here, I stole my mom's hairspray, ran outside, and did about three coats with some time to dry in the sun in between. And genuinely, at least when the hairspray is first applied, it feels like sticky paint. But as I set that third coat to dry, it could already feel it wearing off a bit. So it'd be interesting to see how it would last and actually play. So with that sticky coating sprayed on, I went inside to stain the Ken. Hey, this is Binging with Jesse, and today we're gonna make darkness. One day I'd definitely like to also try making like a colored stain or dye for a Ken, but today I'm going for dark. You know those dark cool woods that you see on some kendamas that are often more expensive than the pale ones for whatever reason? Yeah, we're gonna go for that look. So I started with a small amount of real hot water, and then what's the secret formula? It's just coffee. This is commonly used among other woodworker people using coffee as like a cheap stain, so we're gonna try it with the Ken. So yeah, with the hot water, I did like a good scoop of instant coffee and then a scoop of coffee grounds. I don't really know what the difference is. I think coffee grounds go in the filter thing. I, I don't know how coffee works, to be honest. I know Cafe Kendama is screaming right now. So yeah, with that and just a tiny bit of water to almost create a paste within the bag, I probably did a bit too much water, but I stuck the Ken in there, obviously only doing the sword part, but you could do the whole thing. Put it in there, sat for about five minutes, and then I took it out and it looked pretty dark, but I rinsed off all the coffee stain and then it was pretty much back to how it looked when it started. So I tried something new on round two. I put it in there, let it sit and stain for another five minutes or so. But then instead of rinsing the stain off, I put right out into the sun <laughs> the can with the coffee ground still on it, thinking, you know, maybe it'll give a cool design or something. I put it on a leaf just in case. You know, don't need anybody asking me why there's a coffee smelling ring out on the deck. And uh, I left the speckles on, so maybe that'll give us some interesting patterns. Who knows, but look how dark it is. It's gonna, gonna probably not look like that much longer. All right. And uh, with that, I let it dry out in the sun, probably for about 15, 20 minutes before bringing it in. It was all dried up and we could see the color was definitely changed, but I wondered how it was going to hold up. And it was during that drying time that I took the opportunity to do a couple more grape tricks and force Lewis to make an appearance to hopefully get you to like the video. But uh, yeah, with that, it was time to see how our hairspray was holding up. And yeah, the hairspray did not work. It had like a little bit of tackiness, but after it totally dried, it was basically just like glossy paint all over again. And it smelled like my mom's head and it was just not fun to touch or feel. And I rinsed it completely off and started you know, thinking about what could I do now? Cause I don't have any sticky paint for this video I'm supposed to make about my own sticky paint. So I went to my backup plan, which is something I wanted to try also, which was kind of making my own sticky coat. I basically grabbed just an Elmer's glue stick and cut a chunk off and made a very thin glue stick water paste. And it took a while to kind of mush up the glue stick into little bits. It was kind of chunky. <laughs> and my idea was that if I have this watery, glue stick substance and I coat it all over the Tama, then over time, you know, like it's glue mixed with water. So as the Tama dries, the water's gonna evaporate and it's just gonna be left with a nice thin, gooey, gluey layer once it totally dries up. And that was the idea, but I had no idea how it was gonna work. Cause you know, sometimes you get like glue on the back of paper or something and it, it doesn't dry like rock hard. It dries kind of like a gooey, like a, like a booger, you know what I mean? That was the idea and let me tell you as i was applying it you can see with my finger as my applicator tool it looks disgusting and terrible when you're applying it i don't think you're going to do this anyway but just in case it looks terrible when you're applying it and you're going to think this is going to dry chunky yucky messy but as all that water evaporates and only leaves the glue behind the glue will then dry clear and the coat becomes like 
literally like a Kendama clear coat. I was really shocked at how well this worked, but uh, I didn't quite test the stickiness yet, but I mean, it feels good. I also did do two coats of that, but if you just do a thicker one in the first place, I don't know how much of a difference that would make, but now uh, the hard work's done, something a little simpler. All those Kendama stickers that pile up as you buy all these Kendamas, and they all come with like 40 stickers each. I, I wanted to know if there was something I could do with them, so I thought, you know, like a graffiti style, stick them all over the Ken and see how long they last would be a fun idea. This is a pretty simple process, but a couple cool things you can do. If you think, oh, all my stickers are way too big to stick on to the Ken, you can just cut the stickers into any size stickers you want. And then obviously curved surfaces don't go too well with stickers. So try to find those flat edges around the Ken, like I kind of did with the ring stall or just up the spine. And yeah, it was at that point too that I reassembled everything together. So it's time to meet and test the new Frank. And here the new Frank is. I'll give you, probably start with a close up of the can itself so you can see how that instant coffee, regular coffee stain turned out. It definitely is darkened and it didn't change the texture of the wood too much. It feels like that stain is in there. It doesn't come off on my hands when I handle it, so that's good. I'll show you the Tama up close. You can see it's like matte now. If you remember the old Frank Tama before I covered it in hairspray and glue, it was very shiny, very glossy, very slippery, but now it's like a matte finish. It feels kind of sticky to the hand, but doesn't feel like, you know, a fresh glue stick application either. So it's a good balance and I think it's going to work well when we test out how well it works. <laughs> I'll break down my artistic inspiration with the stickers. Starting in the big cup, you can see I got a little hand from like a Terrapil sticker. And then it's like the whole spine. I had these Kendama USA kind of sketch pencil drawn Kens that I thought kind of looked like bones and it went really well with the Frankenstein theme, I thought. So I basically made a spine out of those Kens. And then of course, around the ring stall and around the bottom of like the base cup there, wrapped some thin cut strips of another Terrapil sticker because it had that light green, dark green kind of vibe. So matched with Frank, it, it all just works together so well. And I think the most important part is how does Frank do stuff, especially the paint, because if this sticky paint even works a little bit, I'm going to be impressed and quite satisfied because Frank couldn't even do a lighthouse before. Okay, let's see. Let's see what he can do. This, this is incredible. Frank is doing incredible, impossible, amazing things. The, the paint feels tacky and grippy and sticky, but it's not getting on my hands or fingers. I'm super excited to see how this lasts for maybe a week. I'll give you a one week update to let you know how it goes if you want to try it yourself. The stickers under the cups do get in a bit of the way because the string kind of catches them and wants to peel them off. But the flat ones along the spine here and the ones around the ring held up perfectly, didn't get in the way as I was playing, and I am just super pumped for the new Frank. I hope you are too. Let me know what else we can do to this man. And with that, have a good sticky hairspray of a day friend.